Welcome to this episode of The Common Sense Skeptic. Many requests have come in over the past few months for us to touch on crypto. And since the collapse of FTX has brought about even more instability and fallout in the crypto markets, now seems to be an appropriate time to cover this topic. Cryptocurrencies are perhaps more polarizing than politics or religion, and should probably be added to the topics you never talk about in mixed company. In fact, several times we almost shelved this episode altogether. There's a lot of people right now that are financially crippled because of their belief and investments in crypto. And this episode might not be what they want to hear. But in the end, we decided that's exactly why the episode needs to be released. People are getting hurt by these schemes, and maybe we can help prevent that from happening to other people in the future. Out of respect for people that are suffering, we are going to try keeping personal bias out of this conversation as much as possible. Go through what has actually happened to various crypto and crypto exchanges to demonstrate what an incredibly inbred cluster f it is, and stick to the facts, give you the receipts, and let you do your own research afterwards. In between segments, we're also going to show clips of celebrities and investors giving you their opinions on crypto in general. Kind of lighten the mood a little bit. I've read articles about cryptocurrency, I've had it explained to me, and I still don't get it, and neither do you or anyone else. Right off the bat, let's say this. This episode is by no means all-inclusive, and it has been tricky to assemble given how much has been happening with crypto recently. There's a quote about crypto that we've heard floating around, not sure where it came from, but it certainly seems to be true. If you love crypto, you love it, but you probably don't understand it. If you hate it, you probably hate it because you do understand it, and you can't fathom why other people can't see what you see. John Oliver had the perfect way of describing crypto in this opening monologue. We're going to talk about cryptocurrencies. Everything you don't understand about money combined with everything you don't understand about computers. <laughs> Let's start off simply by acknowledging that crypto isn't one single thing. This is an umbrella term that's used to discuss this topic broadly. Kind of like how cancer isn't one single disease. It covers a wide spectrum. So there's never going to be a universal cure for all cancer. Cryptocurrencies break out into four different types. The four main types of crypto are store of value, digital currency, utility tokens, and security tokens. Again, not unlike cancer, which has four stages, some of which are hell-bent on destroying you right away, others you can live with for a long time until the right conditions come along that will cause it to metastasize. Now, we could go through every single coin, shitcoin, and token and elaborate on the minute differences between them, but for right now, we're just going to give you one singular cold hard truth. They are all the same. Exactly the same. Stop screaming at your computer. Regardless of what technology backs them, regardless of their current trading value, regardless of who their celebrity spokesperson is, every single cryptocurrency out there relies on one overriding factor, trust. Substitute, if you prefer, confidence or faith, because for some people, crypto seriously is their substitute for religion. But as soon as trust, confidence or faith in a cryptocurrency falls to zero, so does the value of that coin. And that's why, according to Coinopsy, there have been 2,421 failed cryptocurrencies leading up to May 24th of 2022, many of them likely targets of pump and dump schemes like crypto calls, as seen on This Week Tonight with John Oliver. This market is essentially the Wild West and ripe for exploitation. For instance, it can be easy to manipulate the value of certain coins through things like pump and dump schemes. Regulators crack down on those when they happen with stocks, but they've been slower to act in the crypto market. And that may explain why some groups have felt perfectly comfortable posting videos like this. Welcome to Crypto Calls, a leading cryptocurrency pump group, where we skyrocket the value of coins for six hours at a time. To start, create an account on the Cryptopia exchange and fund it with Bitcoin. For information about our weekly pumps, including the name of the coin we are pumping, follow our Telegram channel. Once released, be sure to buy the coin as quickly as possible. When everyone in the group has purchased the coin, we will begin advertising it to other investors on social media, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, StockTwits, Discord, and Telegram. Everyone is involved in marketing so that we can achieve maximum profits. Throughout the six hours, we will see two to three major pumps powered by targeted marketing. This will be an opportunity for our members to take some profit. When it is time to sell our full positions, about five hours into the pump, place or sell orders above market price. During the final hour, outside investors will fill our orders as they FOMO into the coin that we have increased in value 1,000 to 2,000%. By the time that the six hours is up, everyone in our group will have sold for profit. Crypto calls. Together, we profit. 
Holy shit! It's kind of destabilizing, just a brazen advertisement for something that you could have sworn was illegal. This may be the first you've ever heard about crypto calls, but we promise you've heard about this next pump and dump scheme that's happened far more recently. In December of 2013, two software engineers named Jackson Palmer and Billy Marcus launched the Dogecoin as a sarcastic meme coin using a Shiba Inu dog meme as their origin, making it the first ever meme coin. The year it came out, Doge reached a high value of 4 one hundredths of a penny, so 25 to the penny, 2500 to the dollar. Two years later, it dropped 80% to an all-time low of 8 one thousandths of a cent. For several years, Doge simply existed as a means of tipping social media content within its own community, without attracting too much outside attention or notoriety, until the summer of 2019 when Binance listed Doge on their exchange. Shortly afterwards, the dog shit coin caught the attention of Elon Musk, Snoop Dogg, and Gene Simmons, who called himself the god of Dogecoin because reasons. These three men and other celebrities started tweeting about it, and for whatever reason Musk decided to promote Doge as the inevitable future of crypto, set up to swamp the global financial system, and he started pumping the hell out of it, making unfounded statements regarding Doge and retweeting these ridiculous memes of himself with that theme. By all accounts, Musk was putting his personal brand on this meme coin, so his followers started buying it up. In 2021, he went so far as to tell his legion of Kool-Aid drinkers how he was going to send a literal Dogecoin to the literal moon. Musk is pretty much the sole reason why the price of Doge started climbing in 2021 and spiked at 68.61 on May 8th of 2021, the same day that Musk went on SNL and performed this skit. Well, now, the Doge father. All right, cool. So what is Dogecoin? <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's a digital currency. Now, Colin, are you making any sense of this? Uh, my question is, what is Dogecoin? <laughs> I keep telling you, it's a cryptocurrency you can trade for conventional money. So it's a hustle? Yeah, it's a hustle. Why did you say that, man? Don't fall to everybody. It's a hustle. To the moon! The price of Doge plummeted immediately afterwards to below 20 cents. Two very weak and short-term rallies brought it above the 30 cent mark in the months that followed, but since early 2022, Doge has spent most of its time hovering between 6 and 8 cents. People collectively lost billions following Musk up the Doge Mountain and off the cliff. A fact that Musk brushed off at the 2022 TED Talk when he was asked about this by Chris Anderson. If I had a Dogecoin for every crypto scam I saw. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you regret sparking the sort of storm of excitement over Doge and, you know, where, where it's gone or? I mean, I think Doge is fun and, you know, I've always said don't bet the farm on Dogecoin, uh, FYI. Right. If you're, you know. <laughs> I like dogs and I like memes, and uh, it's got both of those. It would appear Musk really couldn't care less about people who trusted his endorsement of this scheme, which he apparently pumped because he likes dogs and memes. But considering Musk is now being sued in federal court in New York for his part in the Doge pump and dump to the tune of $258 billion with a B, he might just be having second thoughts about that now. The federal court in Manhattan has allowed a class action to be filed against Musk, headed by Keith Johnson, declaring that Doge is a crypto pyramid scheme headed by Musk. From the filing, Johnson's complaint states, Defendants falsely and deceptively claim that Dogecoin is a legitimate investment when it has no value at all. Since defendant Musk and his corporations SpaceX and Tesla began purchasing, developing, promoting, supporting, and operating Dogecoin in 2019, plaintiff and the class have lost approximately $86 billion in this crypto pyramid scheme. This case was filed in June of 2022, one year after Musk was on SNL because Doge never recovered from this. And just in case people think this is a frivolous lawsuit by a disgruntled crypto investor, there have been other, more serious developments in this case. Of particular note, the lawsuit was expanded in September of 2022, adding dozens more plaintiffs. It also added six more defendants to include SpaceX, Tesla, and now The Boring Company. Additionally, it now includes the original Doge founders and what's called the Dogecoin Foundation Incorporated, which, because of the way the lawsuit was filed, allows for everyone in that organization to be included in this action. This is notable because at the top of the class of advisors of the Dogecoin Foundation is Jared Birchall, Musk's chief fixer and representative on the Dogecoin Foundation Advisory Board, who also happens to be the Foundation's legal and financial advisor. 
so we might actually finally get to see that slimeball banker on the stand under oath for this trial. See any other names on there you might recognize? How about Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum? He's involved in this now as well. But it gets better. Another remarkable thing about this case, which is moving forward with initial conferences scheduled for February 24th of 2023, is that because Musk involved his three companies in this garbage, the foundation of this case is racketeering. Thanks to Musk, his companies are named in this civil RICO action, which stands for Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations. And jointly, they're facing down a $258 billion class action by people who will have no problem proving that Musk directly influenced the price of Doge with his public endorsement of this particular shitcoin and the subsequent crash due to his appearance on Saturday Night Live. So it started off 10 years ago as a sarcastic parody of crypto worth a fraction of a penny per unit has, thanks to Elon Musk, turned into the highest value racketeering case of all time worth four times what Bernie Madoff stole from his clients. Now just as crypto coins can crash when faith in them disappears, so too can the same thing happen with the exchanges that deal with these coins. 42% of failed crypto exchanges completely vanished, with no explanation as to why provided to the users of that exchange. They're just gone. And as soon as this happens, the people who can't redeem their crypto because they've been locked out of their accounts start screaming for regulation of this sector, which ironically, is counterintuitive to what has been driving the crypto markets since their inception in 2009, following the housing crisis and subsequent stock market crash, the want for deregulation in favor of a peer-to-peer -peer monitoring and accounting of digital assets. Even Kevin O'Leary, as soon as he lost his ass through FTX, he started crying again for regulation of the crypto market. Although, to be fair, this wasn't his first time. Now, some of the most ardent supporters of crypto make this counter-argument which really isn't an argument in favor of crypto at all. They respond to criticisms of cryptocurrencies by insisting that the technology at the core of it, blockchain technology that creates a distributed ledger recording system, is the future as one of the most secure forms of processing transactions online. These proponents fail to understand the basic difference between investing in a technology versus using that technology. As an example, in your home, you use electricity and you pay your utility bill but you don't earn shares in the power company for using their product. If you pay the bill online, you don't earn shares in the bank as part of that transaction. And this touches on another argument against crypto and blockchain. The power consumption required to mine and maintain these digital assets and technology is ridiculous. From CNET.com, the amount of energy required to process a single crypto transaction is 1,449 kilowatt hours, or roughly the amount of energy required by a single American household for 50 days. Assuming that's true, at 30 cents per kilowatt hour according to energysage.com, every Bitcoin transaction in California costs an average of $434.70 worth of electricity. The same article states that Bitcoin mining alone accounts for 131.26 terawatt hours of energy per year, roughly the same as the annual energy requirement for Argentina and their population of over 46 million people. Bitcoin uses more energy than Netflix, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, and Google combined. I mean, cars are bad for the climate, but at least they take you somewhere. How can a company like Tesla be all in on saving the planet with electric cars and then participate in destroying it with this completely unnecessary online play money? Almost all the people who tout Bitcoin and deal in Bitcoin and who won't shut the fuck up about Bitcoin, <laughs> The millennials, the Gen Zers, the Silicon Valley types, these are all the same people who see themselves as hip and progressive and big environmentalists. Bullshit. You're money-hungry opportunists, and you're not allowed to pretend you care about the environment. Then, there's the time it takes to process a Bitcoin transaction. They are certainly not instantaneous. CoinMarketCap.com says the average confirmation time of a Bitcoin transaction is about 10 minutes. OriginStamp.com states that in most cases, Bitcoin transactions need 60 to 90 minutes to complete. This type of delay alone would make instituting Bitcoin as a currency for small transactions unfeasible. That being said, the technology behind Bitcoin, the blockchain technology, certainly has advantages while conducting online commerce. A distributed ledger that allows for a decentralized and secure record of crypto transactions that are, in theory, immutable 
meaning impossible to erase or replace recorded data. We say in theory because blockchains have been hacked, which makes sense. It's computer code, and some people's miserable purpose in life is to find ways to benefit themselves by corrupting such things. This MIT Technology Review article outlines how in January of 2019, an attacker managed to rewrite the transaction history of Ethereum Classic to the tune of $1.1 million. Ethereum, of course, is also attached to another blockchain product called NFTs, or non-fungible tokens, for things like digitized artwork, which makes it impossible for other people to collect their same creation, for example by dragging and dropping it to their desktop. Buyers purchase tokens of said artwork from the artist, and the blockchain tracking it allows that artist to collect royalties automatically every time the artwork token is resold to somebody else who can't figure out the drag and drop function on their computer. Which is why Keanu Reeves had a bit of a laugh about NFTs in a recent interview. They made uh, NFTs for the new movie, and there were like 100,000 of them, and the site broke like in the first few hours because there were over 300,000 people in the queue trying to buy these NFTs for $50. Um, and so like when you think about the concept of digital scarcity and things that are, you know, they can't be copied. That are easily reproduced. <laughs> well, but they're not the same, right? It's not a fake version of you. And of course, because the transactions are being tracked by the blockchain, that investment is completely safe. Right, Justin Bieber? Right, Madonna? Right, Michael Jordan? Blockchain technology keeps your investment completely secure. Just ask Logan Paul. See, having an asset tracked by blockchain might ensure you don't lose ownership of your fugly monkey cartoon JPEG, but it does nothing towards making sure you don't lose any money on it. If you bought one of these god-awful masterworks at the peak and held onto it, you might as well have taken your money outside and roasted marshmallows with it. That money is gone. Now getting back to cryptocurrencies, let's see how far this contagion has spread. According to CoinGecko.com, they are tracking 12,431 different coins in 92 different categories, trading across 641 exchanges with a global cryptocurrency market cap sitting at just over $1 trillion, which is now down about $2 trillion, or 65%, from the all-time high at the end of November 2021, only 14 months ago. This system of wealth redistribution uses insane amounts of energy to facilitate, and in the end, does not give consumers a usable technology when buying normal goods and services. Yet, some people swear that this paradigm is somehow going to take over global finance, mainly because John Everyman is tired of the government regulating their money, until their accounts disappear, and then they're singing a different tune. Crypto is reminiscent of how Airbnb was supposed to upend the global hotel industry by owning no hotel rooms, or how Uber was going to revolutionize taxis, by owning no taxis. On a similar token, crypto has created a global network of pseudo-finance that is financially and physically worth absolutely nothing. So how exactly did we get here? Let's take a quick time out before getting into the next portion of this special report, because we've still got a lot of ground to cover. Part two of the truth about crypto is coming up as soon as you're ready and click right here. <laughs> 